Hello class, today we are working in chapter 2, section 7, and uh, we are going to be solving rational equations um, with one variable, meaning you'll, you'll just have an x or you'll just have a y. Um, we will be uh, looking for extraneous solutions. Um, which are basically garbage, garbage solutions to throw out. And we'll be working with applications, um, which uh, are word problems when you're dealing with the textbook. Or um, are the world problems when you get out of school. And are actually the, uh, the main place that we're going to uh, use our math is in, in applications uh, in the real world. Um, first thing I want to talk about is our extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are uh, solutions that just don't make sense. Um, And um, so they, uh, they basically, they might be a, a negative number. Um, if we're looking at like time in a physics problem, um, a negative number may not make sense because we're not going backwards in time. We're trying to figure out the future and what will happen. Um, if we're trying to graph a, uh, an equation with an X and a Y and we get an imaginary number, um, we may throw that out, um, and the, the, the main way you can really uh, find these is um, you have to ask yourself, does this answer make sense? And, um, and if it does, you use it, and if it doesn't, you don't. So you actually have to look a little deeper into the actual problem. Um, and, uh, and so that, that's just the, uh, the definition of um, you know, what to do with extraneous solutions. Um, we're going to just do a couple of, uh, of problems. Um, the algebra of precalculus is probably the most difficult part of precalculus. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going we're gonna to now work on solving rational equations. Um, so if we have like x plus 1 over x plus 2 equals 4. Um, this is a, uh, a, a simple algebra problem, um, but a lot of people don't really know what to do when you have a, that x plus 2 in the denominator. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little bit of space near there so I can put some work in here. Um, so x plus 1 over x plus 2 equals 4. And um, what we can do here is we can uh, clear the denominator I don't even need to uh, make the space, um, by multiplying everything by x plus 2. And since we have two sides of the equation, we can use this trick. If we're working with a function that doesn't have this side, we, we can't really do that. We've got to do, um, we've got to resort to other tactics. But in this case, when you have a equation where you're going to get a single answer, um, very often makes our steps a little bit uh, simpler. So first we do is x times x plus 2. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 cancel out. So we end up with just a 1 here. And then 4 times x plus 2 is 4x plus 2 times 4 is 8. Um, and uh, so now, now we have... Um, a, uh, uh, we don't have we don't have standard form, so we're going to bring over the 4x 
and bring over the eight. And I'm just lining them up to the, uh, the common um, uh, pieces here. They, everything cancels out on this side. And we get x squared minus 2x minus 7 equals 0. Um, from here, uh, this one doesn't work out beautifully, so um, we're just going to complete the square real quick. So I'm going to continue up over here. So I get uh, x squared um, minus 2x equals 7. By adding 7 to both sides, the a is already cleared. The c is now cleared. Our b over 2 squared or negative 2 over 2 squared is negative 1 squared is 1. So we want to add 1 here and we can add 1 here. Um, again, because we have this as an equality, we can, we can do this trick. Um, and we get x minus 1 squared equals 8. Take the square root of both sides, you get x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 8. Um, the square root of 8 is 4 times 2. The square root of 4 is 2, so um, I have x minus 1 equals um, plus or minus, pull out that 4, 2 root 2, add 1 to both sides, I get x equals 1 plus or minus I have 2 square root of 2, and, um, and that's, that's the answer to this solution. Um, you could put this in a calculator and get a decimal answer, but it's actually the inferior answer um, because this is an exact um, answer. And uh, yeah, that's that one. Um, so by clearing fractions. And in reality, um, you've probably done this before when you had like a 2 down here. You just never did it when you, uh, or possibly haven't done it when there was actually uh, a variable underneath. But the, the trick works quite well. Um, let's do one more. Um, we'll have like x plus 3 over x equals 1. Multiply everything by x. x times x is x squared. x over x, um, it's uh, 3x over x, which they cancel out, equals x. Um, I'd like to bring this x over, so I get x squared um, minus x plus 3 equals 0. Um, and then uh, complete the square. The a is already cleared. Minus 3 on both sides. x squared minus x equals negative 3. And uh, we get negative 1 over 2 squared is, one, is equal to positive 1 quarter. So you add 1 quarter to both sides. Um, and you get x minus one half squared equals um, this one I think it actually gets a little easier if you think of this as money three dollars negative three dollars plus one quarter is um, negative 2.75 I don't like uh, decimals as much as fractions but that just gets um, the job done very quickly um, and so we see that we're gonna actually have a um, an imaginary answer here um, because we got a negative square root, but we'll finish it up anyway. Um, so it's a x minus one half equals plus or minus the square root of negative two point seven five. Add one half. So x equals one half plus or minus uh, the square root of two point seven five. Um, eh. Good enough answer, but again, clear the fractions. Um, okay, now let's uh, let's let's try another. Um,
problem um, where we may have some garbage solutions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, 1 over um, x minus 3 plus 2x over x minus 1 equals uh, um, let's let's get what this equals um, so uh, uh, no actually uh, 2 over x squared minus 4x plus 3 let's um, solve this and again solve will be x equals something so um, the common denominator here, um, we'd have to multiply this side by x minus 1 over x minus 1. Because now this, and if I multiply this side by x minus 3 over x minus 3, I'll have a common denominator. And realize I'm not changing anything because x minus 1 over x minus 1 is 1. Um, and x minus 3 over x minus 3 is um, also 1, so we're just changing the way things look. Um, and uh, we get x minus 1 plus 2x squared minus 6x. Um, just distributed this and then um, distributed this. Um, equals 2 and um, that's uh, all over um, this is over x minus 1 x minus 3 and this is actually over the same thing. Um, if you factor this out. Now if I multiply both sides by this piece, they'll actually cancel out all, right uh, all together. So if I multiply this side by this and this side by this, they go away. So we can actually um, rewrite it. I'm going to put it in standard form. 2x squared x minus 6x is minus 5x. Um, minus 1 equals 2. Um, and uh, what, can I, what can I do here? Um, I can uh, try factoring this. 2x, x. Um, I'm going to have a minus 1 and a... Um, how is this going to... Um, that, that won't work yet, but um, let's uh, try subtracting 2 on both sides. Um, 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Um, and then if we try factoring this, uh, we get uh, 2x plus 1 and minus 3, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 1 is our 5. That equals 0, so um, x equals 3 and x equals negative 1 half. Um, so these look like our two answers. But our problem is, for our original question, if x equals 3, 1 divided by 3 minus 3 breaks. So this is a bad solution. So our really our only answer is x equals negative one half. Um, so eliminating extraneous solutions. So the the new piece here, um, or the piece we're looking at, is actually a pretty simple piece. Um, it's just eliminating uh, the, the denominator stuff, but um, it's uh, the, the algebra is, is, is the trickier pieces. Um, 
Okay, let's do, let's do one more. Um, uh, we're we're going to do an application problem. We'll just do like a, uh, a word problem um, that may have an extraneous solution. Um, let's find the dimensions of a rectangle. Um, with a uh, minimum perimeter um, if its area is 300 uh, meters squared. Um, so what we want to do is we want to find the, uh, the smallest perimeter um, if we have this as the area. Um, so uh, perimeter is, um, I don't want to do black because the question's in black. Um, the perimeter is equal to 2 times length plus 2 times width. Um, and uh, so our function that we want to minimize is uh, the perimeter of x is equal to 2x plus 2 times 300 over x. Um, and uh, I'm just substituting x in for uh, length and width. Um, and then we can start to solve this. We get 2x plus 600 over x. Um, and then let's um, look at this graphically. 2x plus 600 over x. And let's pull out here. Okay, so... Um, We've got all of this stuff down here, but uh, negative numbers don't um, don't necessarily uh, help us out here. But here, there, we have got a a minimum value. Um, so we could say x is the minimum value of x would be seventeen point three two. Um, and we're measured in meters. Um, if x is 17.32, um, we, uh, we can say the width is 17.32, um, and the length the length is equal to um, 300 over 17.32, as we defined up here, um, which is equal uh, meters, which is equal to approximately um, uh, 17.32 as well. And uh, if you multiply 17.32 meters, um, so we actually have like a square here. So when you add it all up, you get approximately um, 69.28 meters. Um, so uh, that's the minimum perimeter, and the, the dimensions are 17.32 by 17.32 meters, which is what the question was actually asking. Um, that's it for today. Um, let's, uh, Thank you and I will uh, see you in class.